Oh, thank you. Hey everyone, before we get this episode started, also, <laughs> I wanted to sound like a YouTuber, that's why I started off with, hey everyone, like, subscribe below, you know how YouTubers are. Okay, but before we get started, I want you to know we are going extra big with the all-star season of Vulnerability Time podcast, so guess what? We got video podcast, so click in the episode description below if you wish to watch the video of the podcast as well. It'll be a YouTube link, so you can go ahead and get it going and get watching it. Make sure to follow, like, subscribe below. <laughs> Such a YouTuber, right? Anyways, folks, enjoy the episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Vulnerability Time All-Star Season. Deshaun is back. Deshaun, you were, uh, before we get, you know, more into this, you were uh, mentioning something about uh, my headphones. I would just love for you to reiterate that for the folks. Yeah, I need everyone to know. Everyone that is paying attention, listening, Josiah has the best headphones I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> They're awesome. Like, the light? Holy, that, that's like some, like, starship alien as uh, I'm going. I love it. It's extraterrestrial. It's getting intergalactic. It's getting exactly. galaxy. It's getting universal. I'm exactly. here for it. And it's giving cosmos. <laughs> wow. Yes. You know, actually, I actually wasn't even going to get headphones, but the software that I used to record the podcast, it updated. Um, and um, that made the other person's mic echo into my mic. So you just hear a big echo, and it's just, it's, oh, yeah. Technology yeah. stuff. Who yeah, yeah, yeah. We fixed it. We got some pretty dope headphones, dude, on it. I love it. Look at that light. Okay. So, Deshaun, it's been since season one since you've been on the podcast, and you've definitely been a uh, very much requested um, special guest. So, you know, I had to uh, reach out to you for the all-star season. I'm actually glad you couldn't do season three because that just makes the all-star season so much better. I wasn't even planning to do an all-star season. I, I didn't even think about it. I was yeah. actually I was actually feeling like quitting the podcast during season three, but I'm glad I didn't. But here you are. How does it feel to uh, be back, Deshaun? I love it. I feel, I feel like so much, so many like canon events, like pivotal character development moments have occurred in my life since then right so it definitely gives me a whole lot of material and substance to just discuss and cover yeah i can be happy that's awesome how does it feel to be like well, you were already an all-star in season one how does it feel how does it feel to be so well received very well received very <laughs> oh man i, I appreciate it i i I wasn't so brown, I'd be blushing right now. I, I, I don't know what to say. I, um, <laughs> it was it was shocking to say the least. Like I mean, I, I know I I never you know second guess my performance or my ability to speak with fervor and passion, and conviction, and all that, right? But uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I just it, it, it was a lot, and in the best way possible, right? Yeah, yeah I, I couldn't more humble than more Good to see you, man. Good to yeah, see you. Too. And it's great for people to finally put a face to uh, face to the voice. Love yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, folks, today we're talking about... Um, okay, one second. Um, let me get the topics pulled up. I accidentally clicked out of it. What am I doing? So while I get that, we're going to go ahead and stall... Well, oh, no, just kidding. I found it. Okay, so we're going to be talking about when you feel life has robbed you. Uh, the next one is fear is not a solid foundation, but love is. Interesting, interesting. And then the next one, we're going to be talking about um, toxic masculinity versus toxic femininity. That's really interesting. I'm curious to hear that from another male's perspective. We, I've had two females talk about it. And one male talked about it, so you'll be the second one. I think that that's really cool to, like, hear it from, like, both perspectives. And yeah. so far, everyone's kind of, like, female or male, everyone's saying the same thing. And I was just like, interesting. They won't show um, 
this type of similar thinking on the media, you know, they won't they 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 won't show uh, any type of collaboration or they, the media makes money off of division. Yeah, it division does. It does. Right? They they want to just divide us because that's how oh, they conquer, right? Divide and conquer. That's just how it does. Exactly. Very wickedly wise. Very strategic from a business move. That is honestly unfortunate. And not to mention, like sensationalism always sells. For those of us who don't know, and by us I do mean me, um, who don't know what sensationalism means, go ahead and elaborate. To what sense they kind of like when things are, um, you know, you know, like we have the concept of like spilling the tea, right? When things are juicy, when they're hot, <laughs> right? So when things are just really, I guess, like kind of out there, they're outlandish, they're a little mind-boggling in a sense. That's yeah. the thing. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, mm-hmm, it's, mm-hmm. it's very like provocative type of journalism, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Well, we love that. We love a good educational word. Um, okay, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Oh, are you, oh, you're frozen. Okay, I thought you were just making a blank face. Um, I don't know if you can hear me, but if you can, if you can exit and then hop right back on. Here, let me text it to you. So, folks, while we do that, we're going to go ahead and um, stall. But I'm excited for this. I'm really excited for this. Here, should I just call him? I think we're just going to call him because I don't have time to text. Oh, just kidding. He's back. Oh, nope. He's not back. We Wait. love No, that. I think I am. Hopefully. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can see you. Okay, so if you do freeze at all during the episode, you can click off and then click right back on. Um, it'll let you uh, right back in. So it's happened before. Yeah, it's happened like one time. It still works very uh, well and phenomenal. So if you ever stop hearing me, if I ever freeze, um, on my end, I can see if I freeze. But if you ever stop hearing me because you froze, uh, just click off and jump right back off. No biggie. Okay, okay, sure. Coolio. Okay, so which topic do you want to get into first? I'm actually curious to just hear more. Um... Go ahead. Like, what topic would you like to get into first? I'll let you pick. Honestly, I'm down to roll the dice, right? I, and I love uh, just impromptu things and improvising. So if you want to just start us off, surprise me. <laughs> okay. Okay, so cool. What's the most intriguing? What would you say? Oh, I would say the most intriguing is the um, – when life has robbed you and the toxic masculinity versus toxic femininity. So we're going to do, I guess, roll the dice. Let's do, okay. So when you feel life has robbed you, what, from even your, where do we even start? I don't even know where to start from that. So, so why, why that topic? What drew you to that topic? And like, how does that relate to like your experiences? Oh man. So the reason I thought that topic specifically just kind of stuck out to me is because um, a little life update for all you guys. Last The past few years, I was in Bloomington, Indiana, and in January of this year, I just moved to Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, the reason being is in December of last year, I actually got laid off from my job. And on top of that, too, I also hey, wait, had, pause I real quick. a breakup. Deshaun, pause real quick. Okay, move. Yep. Do something. Okay, good. Okay, now you're back. Um, it was going. The audio was going faster than the video. Or vice versa. Okay, continue. You're good. Okay. okay. Actually, you know what? I want to see. Do you think? I want to try opening this on my phone and see if it'd be a bit better. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I've had people do. That. Yeah. Go ahead and do that. I'll stall while okay. you do that. Gotcha. Give me one okay. Second. Okay, folks. Oh my God, I'm so excited to get into this. Oh my gosh, yes. He's looking good, isn't he? He's handsome. He's looking. He's glowing. Y'all see the skin? It's gleaming. The skin is skinning. It's gleaming. It's gleaming. Um, I don't know what products he used, or if it's just flawless and natural. Just woke up like that. Um, but yes, folks. 
So we love a good technical difficulty. But while we stall, can we just appreciate these headphones? Y'all want to know where I got them? Nowhere fancy or special. It was $30 um, in, uh, at Walgreens. And it was a last minute purchase because I was happy. It, it's, it's just amazing. Look at that. What the? Oh. Okay. okay. My phone is taking a while to download the app, so I'm just going to go back on this. I instead switched to my um, my Wi Fi, so hopefully this works a little better. Okay. Cool, cool. It's seeming working better. It's clearer. You're gleaming. Okay. So you stopped at. Um, you had moved to Raleigh, and you were going through a breakup. That's where you stopped at. Yeah, yeah, and I just lost my job and everything. People got laid off. My company was doing, like, massive flatwet layoffs. Not even flatwet, actually. just on a global scale. And it put me in a moment where I was kind of, like, in a dark place, honestly. Like, mentally, emotionally, and everything. It felt like the world, the universe at large was almost, like, against me, right? Um, also, quick question for you. On this podcast, am I allowed to delve into, like, more explicit content? Oh, it's vulnerability time. We yeah. say everything under the sun, Every- literally. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, I, just a little preface, I've never really, I've never really delved into psychedelics specifically before all this, mm-hmm. but I actually tried mushrooms for the first time, magic mushrooms, I saw like okay. psilocybin, and uh, for those that don't know, that's a Schedule 1, it's labeled a Schedule 1 drug, meaning it's under a legal context, it serves no therapeutic or medicinal use, but the data, the, all the research suggests otherwise, right? Exactly. Yeah, and uh, I'm a huge proponent of it now. But I, but you know, back then, back in December, I gave it a shot for the first time. Yeah, would you say that was like part of because of the low moment it led you to that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But a bunch of friends that you know they were more, I guess, like active, like psychonauts, right? Like they really delved into that stuff more frequently. Mm-hmm. And I was like, screw it, <laughs> I have a lot going on right now. I need to figure some stuff out. I need to do like some internal right. reflection and healing. And I gave the shot, and um, it was it was revolutionary in in terms of. Uh, a lot of people say that. Right. Uh, it actually opened up so many doors. It literally awakened my third eye in a sense because I realized, oh, all of this is purely a matter of perspective. I feel like I've been robbed and therefore I have been. That is becoming my reality. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a concept known as solipsism, which is really interesting because it basically suggests that the external universe is not actually real. It's only the internal universe. So whatever you want reality to be is what you need to project onto it. So it's all dictated by your perception. And I realized, okay, you know what? Up until this point in my life, every door that has seemingly been closed on me has only led to another one opening. And if that's the case, if that's been the case so many times, why yeah. is that going to be the case again? Why am I constantly thinking of, oh, my God, I'm going to fail. Or, oh, my God, the worst outcome might happen. Why not instead go down the route of, a, of assuming the best, right? The law of assumption. Yes. And people will call you delusional at first, but it's only delusional until it works. Right? Oh, the, you oh you dropped that mic right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Speak those wisdoms, Deshaun. Yeah, yeah. So that was, it was life-changing. And then, what did you know it? Literally, within two weeks, got a new job on my doorstep, uh, 30K salary increase right there, all my relocation covered, living my best life and honestly and also, I mean, my company still gave me a severance package so for two months i just took a little vacation a paid vacation essentially that's right right because i just got out of that negative mindset mm-hmm. i realized i'm like no like it, it might be a cruel world that i live in but the universe at large is benevolent it wants the best for you you that's just true. have to ask you just have to assume yeah yes manifest that law of attraction yeah, yeah. And- also, the law of polarity, you know, um, the law of polarity, according to the law of polarity, what's up, um, like, we know the only reason, this is what, it's, the theme of it is, this is, and I'm about to give an example, is the reason why we know up is because there's down. Otherwise, we can't recognize that there's a up because we've never been down and i don't mean that just circumstance wise i mean that just in in general mm-hmm. um literally like the I, the only reason why i know that there's a sky is because i am aware that there's a ground mm-hmm. you know i am exactly. the only reason why there's 
north is because there is a south. Mm-hmm. So the a, a lot of times the extent to our downs in life, you know, we can experience that extent of up. You know, um, you can a yeah. You're only able to experience night because you know what day is like. Yes. Right, exactly. Yes. And it's like the darkest midnight, you're able to recognize and experience the lightest sunlight. Like the sun is only going to be brighter because of that darkest night. Because you've, it, it's been your, for example, it can be someone's normal to experience only midnight. Like people in Alaska, like they experience dark for so long now if they came to texas that sun is so bright but to people who grew up here in texas i know that you're in north carolina but to people who grew up here in texas of course we experience nighttime because we get it every single day but our experience of nighttime does not look like alaska's nighttime their nighttime is a lot darker and a lot longer oh yeah months so it's like to us, yeah, the sun is bright, but like, you know, it, it's bright, very bright, but because, but it's not that bright to us as opposed to someone who comes here from Alaska. Does yeah. this make sense? The law of polarity. Oh, yeah. It's indeed. Cool. Let it up. It's always just, you know, it's always darkest before dawn, too. There's always a cause like balance and equilibrium in the world. If, it's, if you're going to go through turmoil and a rough time, it will inevitably be followed by a balancing force, which is right. a, a, a time of prosperity, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I think that that's really encouraging to hear that, you know, the, yeah, like the dark moment, just for example, you know, um, the extent of like how people say there's a thin line between love and hate. Yep. You know, the extent that you love is, can be the, I mean, the extent that you hate can be the extent that you love. Yep. Um, so, but I think that's really encouraging. I feel like that's definitely encouraging for someone out there who is in a dark moment, you know, um, that eventually, you know, that just will make the sunshine um, even more better. Exactly. And then also another the thing I definitely want to touch on too is like, I think you do have to be a pit. Something that I forgot to mention, <clears throat> speaking of the law of polarity, is um, I know what I'm worth because I know what I am not worth. I know I'm not worth being, you know, um, treated horribly or being abused. Um, so because I know what I'm not worth, that has helped me to know um, what I am worth. I'm able to learn because of the downs. Thank you. Almost, I hate to use the word psychopathic, mm-hmm. but in a sense you kind of have to be, you have to be really a masochist during these moments, right? Like one thing- that I know what that means, but for those who don't know. Yeah, yeah, so for sure. So, so. A masochist is the opposite of a sadist. A sadist is someone who enjoys inflicting pain on others. A masochist is someone who enjoys receiving pain, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm a big masochist when it comes to the gym, for example, right? The gym itself is kind of like a microcosm for life at large because you're in turmoil, you're suffering, you're lifting all these heavy How much you bench? Oh, 315. Okay, see, that's nothing. I bench 316. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) Hey. <laughs> okay, yeah, sorry, continue. No, I've been no, done to ask you that. I know, I uh, appreciate it. You gotta, you know, let me uh, throw a little sl- slight flex out there. Yeah. But, yeah, so, so you know, you're, you're basically tearing those, micro- those microfibers in your muscles in the gym, and it's grueling, and it's taxing on your body, but what comes out of it is going to be inevitably more growth. And so you kind of just, every time you're in a tricky situation in life and in a predicament where, you know, things are just not going in your favor, the cards, the deck is stacked against you, mm-hmm. You have to realize, I'm only going to grow out of this. This is my character development arc. And therefore, you need to thrive and enjoy the process. Mm-hmm. Right. I think this isn't a destination, you know, contrary to public belief. It is just enjoying the process to the destination. Can you say that again? Happiness is not the destination itself. It is the pursuit of a destination. And that destination is whatever you want it to be. 
wow, time stamp right there. Let me, I'm writing down any advertisement sound bites. Boom. Wow. Oh. There's something that I want to tell you about. I'll, I'll just wait till after this. I think you would find it. I, oh, y'all, we love a technical difficulty. Oh, oh, okay, great. Great. It's back. We, We're back. We do it. Yeah. I, I want to, like, I'm going to, I want to tell you something after this, though. Um, okay. I think you would really appreciate it. Yeah, because sure. It, it seems like you're in the space where, Seems like you have the mindset to receive it and ready to hear it. Definitely, definitely. I appreciate it for sure. Whatever yeah, it is. It's definitely gonna be a good thing. Also, when it comes to mushrooms, this is the thing. I don't do it, I don't do drugs. One, I'm just afraid of drugs. I'm prescribed drugs and I'm still afraid of them. I'm I'm a fan of drugs. I'm just personally afraid of them because my um I remember this one time where I was prescribed a drug. The side effects were just, I had allergic reaction to it. And I was just like. Yeah, yeah, no. It's yeah, cool. I, get that. I get that. Yes, but um, Big Pharma definitely is a fan of the illegalization of drugs. Because of, of not prescribed drugs. I'm talking about like natural, organic stuff that comes from the earth. Exactly, because that's not a money maker for them. Oh yeah, they want you to have prescribed drugs, um, and charge you buku amount of money. Oh yeah, and the only one of the downfalls with that, because everything has its pros and cons, is unfortunately um, they want it to be unregulated for us because they want us to fall into addiction. Um, because we will go into the system in some way, shape, or form, and they can make money off of us. Yeah. So I personally am a fan of the legalization um, of drugs. I think that the reason why it is not quote-unquote legal is because Big Pharma wants to make a lot of money. And when you um, look at the, the few, because I think it's about six corporations that run um, – capitalism um and this is legit facts folks you can go research it or you can reach out to me on instagram and i can see the research this is what we're having to go over in my class and i have to do a huge research i've already did the research project on it but it made me very depressed because i'm just like i hate humans i was like of course they would do this but anyways um big pharma is one of the big uh companies that own um America, you know, um, they're above the president, they're above Congress, all that good stuff. Um, all that good stuff. But um, yeah, it's very strategic why there is such a stigma on, for example, mushrooms. Um, there's also a lot of information that can that we can receive and open up to that they don't necessarily want us to know because um, Freedom, um, they don't want us to have too much freedom because they want to control us. And how can you control someone is by limiting someone's perception, is by stigmatizing many things. Um, yeah, it's suppression um, equals uh, equals money. Control is cash. So... A lot of people, if you research it, it's like a lot of people, um, for example, who've done mushrooms, they become enlightened to a different kind of reality that is around them that um, promotes creativity, promotes freedom. But that's not how um, the higher powers that be <laughs> within capitalism, the one percent, they don't want that. They want to promote a uh, limit. They want to promote just um, a one way type of thinking. Um, for example, it, it's our schooling system. Um, it doesn't promote creativity. It takes creativity out of children. What it does promote is workers. One set thing. And if you do it wrong, you're bad. So now you got to do it correctly. Like it's, it doesn't promote creativity. It promotes restriction. So 
I'm a fan of people doing mushrooms. I don't have a stigma on it. Um, I don't, honestly. There's a reason why there is a stigma um, on it, and it is not for the betterment of humanity. They yeah. could legalize it. Like, they could legalize it and uh, give us information on how to moderate it or for us to go see a person and they um, they just help us with that. Like, we could just buy it off the street and then go to um, a psychologist and they can help us to moderate it. You know what I mean? Things yeah. like that. But enough about that. You know, there's just a lot that goes into it. But you are just such a... A testament to um, breaking free from the societal matrix. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. No yeah. Doubt. Um, yes. So, thanks for sharing. Anything else you want to add before we go on to the oh, next? Oh, oh man, just as there's a billion, billion things I could add. I love uh, my new name. <sighs> all right, like I, I can talk, I can talk about this topic for just days on end. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot to just actor in general um yeah I, like that. I sure. think it's, it's something that should be destigmatized um all the clinical data and research that we have suggests that it is in fact very beneficial um obviously under like guided supervision right and then with like a you know like a moderated dosage and everything it can be tremendously impactful in the most beneficial of ways yeah i'm about to drop another mic drop um weed mushrooms that wasn't always illegal that's a modern age concept that yeah. certain drugs are illegal people have you it's people it doesn't matter if it's in the bible days the days where this or that you know um the days before that like it's historically it's always been used no one would frown upon someone for using that that wasn't a thing yeah, yeah. i mean native american common with too and everything right like yeah all rituals and ceremonies behind it for a lot of indigenous cultures and there's a reason why exactly. it does a lot to transcend and to, to ascend to a, a different level of, of just right. Right? and it wasn't even in the realm of legal or illegal it just was the reason why i'm saying legal um putting that term on it is to you know, related to our current state. Like, so legal, I'm just, I'm still going to use the word just to help prove the point. Um, it is mushrooms, weed, all that natural stuff has been more legal throughout history than illegal. Um, we, we got to understand the history and the context of substances like that. Um, it is very strategic why the modern era um hence capitalism's growth um why the modern era has now stigmatized it but if we go back then like if people from back then hit a time machine and looked at us now they're like i we do this is n normal why are y'all frowning upon that what y'all are weird not us you know like yeah so yeah i just think it's you know uh pretty pretty cool and i love that you also stated you know within moderation because too much of anything it is is gonna be bad for humans exactly. exactly yeah so go go you uh deshaun go go you thank you thank you i appreciate it okay so uh, uh next topic um let me see okay so do you want to pick or you want me to pick Go for it. Okay. Fear is not a solid foundation, but love is. I, I don't even know. I have, I don't even know what to say right now. My mind is blank. So go for yeah. it. Why that topic? Uh, so this is another interesting one. And it's also one that I can tie back to that. Again, I hate to, to beat a dead horse, but I can tie back okay. to yeah. that first mushroom trip that I had in December. Right. Um, I realized that a lot of my life, in terms of my achievements, my accolades, the things that I've accomplished throughout the course of my life, it's really been on the basis of, uh, honestly, spite. A lot of just negative emotion has fueled the things that I've done, right? The heights that I ascend to, it's always been because of, like, oh, like, I have to prove people wrong, or, oh, I have to show this to someone else, or I have to show someone else up. It's, it's a very 
competitive cutthroat kind of mindset. Which wow. again, not to not to stigmatize that because that in itself is not inherently bad. It, right. it can be very motivational. At the end of the day, it is right. just a fuel source, right? Yeah, it's uh, neutral. It can exactly, be exactly. Yeah. But I didn't want it. I didn't want it to be my sole source of fuel, especially once I moved to North Carolina. I entered a much more healthier lifestyle, state of mind, and I, I found myself not being as driven. I was wondering, like, why is my inner flame diminished? Uh, and it came back to the fact that I wasn't, I just didn't have enough of that hate or that spite to fuel me anymore. So I needed a new source. Oh right? my God, I say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and actually, so, so one thing that really struck a chord with me, I don't know if any, any, I don't know if you or any of the viewers watch the show You on Netflix. With like, you know, oh, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. So like, that's my four, husband. He's my <laughs> husband. <laughs> well, season four came out, and I'm sure you recall too. Like, you know, there was a scene where he attempted to commit suicide, jumped off a bridge. Also, you know, by the way, not trying, not trying to spoil anything for anyone, but a little <laughs> segment of one of the episodes of season four was, you know, he jumped off a bridge, tried to commit suicide, and as he's drowning, he comes upon a realization of like, oh my god, I have been spending so much time, spending so much energy trying to give my love to other people. And he remembers his younger self. He was like, oh my God, that's who I really should have given love to. That's who I really should have paid attention to, is my inner child, just me. I should, have, I should have poured that love into me. And that's basically the realization that I came for. It's like, oh my God, I, this is my new fuel source. My love for myself, my love for that eight-year-old version of me, as well as not even just him, but also the 80-year-old version of me, the, the, my past self and my future self. I have to do it for me. Because once I can do it for myself, out of love, out of that genuine tenderness, I'm able to give back to my community, to my friends, to my family, the people in my life, so much more. Because I myself am innately fulfilled. So I can get out of a place of abundance and not lack of scarcity. Wow. Right? And in that process, I learned that, 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 that love essentially is the emotion that I need to constantly just harp on. My love for myself, my love for man, my, my, you know, mankind at large, my love for my work, my love for everything that I do. Fear is just not the, it's not the way. Right. Fear, if anything, is, is it's, it's not to say fear is disadvantageous. It has its, its benefits and its purposes, right? right. Fear is the reason that when you're walking in a dark alley, you don't approach that hooded stranger. Yeah, you better not. Exactly. You need fear. But again, just in moderation, it's to prevent you from entering a sticky situation you don't want to be in. But at the end of the day, you shouldn't be fearful of what might happen if I do so-and-so. Oh, my God, I might lose. Oh, my God, I shouldn't enter just this venture or this enterprise because I might fail miserably. You need to approach it with a detachment to, towards any outcomes. And you just need to assume the best outcome. Even if initially you can't lose, you have to believe that in the future you will win. Right. Oh, I got something to add to that. For the folks... And by folks, I also mean me, because I know we are human. When the fear doesn't leave, I want to encourage y'all, do it afraid. Do it afraid. Because maybe that feeling might not leave so quick, but our actions, we can still do it afraid. Yeah, it's like it's gonna get done, and then we're gonna be so grateful that wow, I'm so glad I I did that. Yeah, uh, yeah no doubt. Yeah, and it's um, the best way to really like gauge so like how brave and courageous you are. You're only yeah, brave and courageous if you initially have some fear, but mm -hmm. it's you having fear and still pushing forward. That's what makes you brave. That's what makes you courageous. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I want to go back a little bit about what you said about um, my husband's, um, uh, you know, uh, suicide attempt on the, that show you, because um, he is my husband. I don't care. That man is romantic. I was like, oh my god, is this toxic? I was like, but like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little bit. I was like, what? But I know a lot of people. Um, I know he's a lot of people's husbands. People who watch the show, but he's he's really my husband everyone else just wishes um that, i think that's what we're gonna settle on How about that um yeah okay so but all jokes aside you know a lot of what you said about the realization that he had you know uh, coming from someone like me who committed suicide at the age of 15 
in this very room, actually, in this very room that I am recording this podcast, literally in this very room, um, I definitely can attest to um, that kind of breakage from my internal societal matrix, my, excuse me, my internal matrix and my, you know, personal matrix and my personal uh, limit, limiting outlooks. Yeah. You know, um, coming back from an experience, and that's what I wanted to talk to you about a little after this, about what happened after that ex- during that experience, excuse me, what I encountered. Um, I definitely, and I know a lot of people uh, have, have, are like this, they come back with this newfound sense of love and this new outlook on love. Look at the guns. <laughs> look at the guns. That's that bench press 315. Now, me, folks, look at that. That's 316 right there. He could never. Got me beat. I'll get that one day. Look at that. Right. <laughs> so. Uh. Yeah, so I think that that is very interesting. That you, Okay, first of all, let me just say, you were just spitting all kinds of wisdom. I was not expecting, like, I'm literally blown away. Uh, no wonder you're an all-star. Um, the shot that was on season one is completely different. I see so much growth in you. You're, it's just so different. Oh, my gosh. There's just, just energy and vibe coming from you. It's Go you. I'm proud of you because you could have quit and no one would blame you, honestly. You could have gave up and no one would blame you because it's understandable. I'm proud of you. Thank you. I'm not I'm not necessarily saying I, I'm not just focusing on I'm proud of you for where you are now. I'm proud of you for the moments where maybe you felt like giving up. I'm proud of you for those dark moments. I appreciate you, and I'm just as proud to you, uh, proud of you, right? I want to make sure that's a bunch of shit, because you've gone through a bunch of shit yourself, and you've endured, and you've come out on top, so I'm, I'm not just proud of the present you, I'm proud, I'm proud of the past you, right? The one that did all the enduring, I'm proud of the present you that has come out on top, and I'm proud of the future you that will continue to shine the glory. I fucking receive that. I receive that. I feel that. I feel that. I receive that. I fucking receive that. Damn right. Like that. Okay, so anything else to add before we move on to the next topic? Uh, off the top of my mind, no, I think we're good. Okay. I think I have all the bases. So, uh, toxic masculinity and slash versus toxic femininity. What? Go for it, Deshaun. Why that topic? What interested you? Because that, that topic is vastly uh, different than um, the two topics that we both dis- that we just discussed. I'm curious. Yeah, yeah. No, the, so the reason I chose that one specifically is because of the fact that over the course of my life as a man, I have struggled quite a bit when it comes to defining what it what is masculinity and how do I maintain my masculine frame? How do I enter my masculine energy? And specifically, my divine masculine energy, right? That's been a point of contention, a point of struggle for me quite a bit. Because as a child, you know, just to preface, I was much more of a feminine kid. Like, I was very soft, very tender. I wasn't into conventional things that a lot of boys were interested in. Like, I didn't really care about cars or sports for that matter, right? I've always been more into, like, I, I definitely was into, like, the nerdy stuff, like anime, like video games and all that. But I really always had, like, a penchant for, you know, fashion and uh, spirituality, crystals, astrology, numerology, like the things that are conventionally more feminine. So confused, and then not to mention, I'm also just you know, a bit of a lover boy at heart, so having that streak in me too, it made it difficult in relationships when I would enter a romantic engagement with someone who was, you know, maybe not as romantic as me. So then it kind of put me in a situation where I was like, oh shoot, like, am I feminine or am I too feminine? Am I not masculine enough? Mm. So over the course of the years, I did a lot of research into it. I looked into it myself. Um, it also makes it difficult when you don't have a lot of like, masculine role models around you, right? Because you're kind of in a situation where you have to just paint the path yourself. Uh, and what I've really, truly come to discover is that 
toxic masculinity or toxic femininity, these are misnomers because I don't believe you actually can be toxically masculine. And hear me out when I say that. Toxic masculinity, what people are referring to, what they actually mean to say is not masculinity. Mm-hmm. It's a lack of masculinity. That's what is true. Right? And first, we also need to define what is masculinity, what is femininity at their basis, at their core. Masculine energy is just about taking action and initiative. And therefore, it is finite because you can only do so much of that. Feminine energy, however, is about receiving and being and being present. And that is infinite. You can do an infinite amount of that. And you need both. You need that duality to maintain, right, the cosmic balance, the universal equilibrium. So if you were truly a masculine man who was in a masculine frame, you would not be toxic. For example, what, what we define to be toxic mas- uh, uh, no, toxic masculinity is a guy who is maybe super braggadocious, who's really just um, maybe excessively self-aggrandizing. Yes. Right, right. He's an Logan emotional. Paul, even though I do love me some Logan Paul because he's on WWE now and he's the new United States champion. Um, I learned to stop hating Logan Paul and to just be like, this man is talented. But yes, he's definitely right. what a lot of people would define as what you're just saying. Yeah, the, he, he has this, like, this chip on his shoulder. These guys need to like, flex their big muscles and, and show the world, oh, this is who I am. This is what I am. Like, look at me. But that stems from insecurity. That isn't true confidence. Because true confidence is quiet. Like, if I drive a Maserati, I don't need to tell you that I drive it. You'll just see my car whipping through the, the freeway, right? Like, you're just going to know. Do you have a Maserati? Is that what you're telling us? One day. <laughs> oh, okay. I was about to say. I was like, I, I can see I, it. I live like I have one, right? Just because, again, like the law of assumption, I'll get one eventually. If I embody the energy right now, currently, I'll just get one eventually, no matter what. Mm. But yeah, point being, right? Uh, it's the absence of masculinity. That's what makes someone toxic. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. You know, also something that I thought it was pretty cool that you had mentioned um, when you were going back to your uh, previous days. It made me think of how uh, you, you had some more feminine traits. Um, it, it made me think of how so many people possess both traits. Honestly, humans possess both traits to some extent. And two things can be true at once. Exactly. Human beings are walking, talking contradictions. We're complex, convoluted creatures. We're multifaceted, yeah. multidimensional. You can be black and white at the same time. That's just how it goes. Right, right, exactly. And it's just like you can take initiative and then also receive love. Hello, if someone's married. I mean, it's just like you yeah. can take initiative to get on that knee and propose. Um, you're also um, receiving love in that moment as well. Exactly. Would be on that thing proposing. Obviously not everybody is the same. Some people, it's, it's marriage is not about love. Marriage is about um, an ego boost. And they're not really dead. But anyways, yes, toxic masculinity, toxic femininity. Um, yeah, it's stemming. It seems like that's stemming from limitations, expectations, mm-hmm. and insecurities. You know, either... Bad all together or just separately or two out of the three, whatever, um, some type of limitations, insecurity, and or expectation. Um, Having to prove something to others or to yourself consistently, that is also the uh, definition of insecurity, by the way, when you're having to prove something, whether it's to yourself or to others on a consistent basis. That's And I'm not saying that – I'm not saying – Oh, someone's bad for doing that. I'm just saying that that, that is a reality and a fa- fact, you know. Mm-hmm. I have that, you know, I'm doing a lot better at it, but I have definitely that uh, insecurity. But it's less and less now, now that like I'm out of my undergraduate degree. Um, for example, like being, you and I were both uh, LU ambassadors. Yep. Uh, um, I'm going to be honest with you, m- my. Um, my presence there, uh, I definitely was doing it to prove myself. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. You know, well, if, I, if, I, if I said the opposite, I was, I was in the exact same thing. Yeah. 
I get it. I mean, because ha- wearing those red coats, yeah. honestly, I was like, check me out. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Look at me. Red is my color. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, anything else you want to add to Sean? Before yeah, we I also, like, in, in a lot of the topics, I also want to address, like, there are so many misconceptions that I've noticed people have about the idea of being masculine. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason I'm going on masculinity is because, you know, me being a man. Because um, I, I told uh, a girl the other day, actually, that, you know, I like to consider myself a, like, a more traditional, conventional masculine man. And, you know, she was like, oh, well, that also consists of, like, you know, you not being emotionally expressive, right? Like, you're just not allowing yourself to be emotional. And I'm like, oh, no, actually, not at all. Uh, a masculine man is indeed emotional. And he embraces and accepts his emotions for what they are. The difference is, though, a masculine man is taming his emotions, right? It's a wild style, like stallion, but he's kept it within an enclosure and he has it tamed and under control. So he's not just exploding and emotionally vomiting on people. That is masculinity. Mm-hmm. Right? right? There's just so many misconceptions and, and, right. and you know, misplaced the maliciousness and ideas towards these ideas that really need to be addressed and then right. reconciled. And to not to mention as well, to add on to that, um, because what you just said, totally a reality for many people. Um, Also to mention, we are humans first before we are masculine or feminine. Perception of it, it is now internally limited as only pretty or only um, limited. Sorry. Um, from someone's perception of it, it is now internally ugly, or that tree is pretty. It's a Sorry, tree. I gotta, However, I gotta go fast. A I gotta human go. Comes a definition. I, For ex- I'm so sorry, y'all. I, I, I accidentally clicked back sp- um, the rewind button on accident. So bear with me. We're gonna get this episode going. Example: A tree just is a tree. It literally just is a tree. However. A human comes along and we put this label, oh, that tree's ugly or that tree is pretty. And therefore, it is now um, limited um, from someone's perception of it. It is now internally limited as only pretty or only ugly. It, it, it's when fact no longer overtakes opinion. That's mm-hmm. where we can have a lot of limitations. So it's like the fact of the matter is it's a freaking tree. It's a tree. Yeah, yeah. And There's then no describe all these people's right. Like Exactly. And so people do that, you know, to humans and we place definitions and labels. Um, that's unfortunately how the world works. And the thing is that I feel like has neutrality to an extent. However, um, every, not everything, many things have many decisions, thoughts, actions can have consequences. And the term consequence is neutral. That means that something good can be a consequence and something bad or something that we define as bad or we define as good can be a consequence. And so it's just like, what's to say what it really is? Because it's just like, My perception, this is just like someone's perception of masculine could be the definition of what you just said, that you are like you take initiative and you can express emotion Mm -hmm. to someone. I've heard people say that that is so masculine of him to do. You know, they didn't say that to me. I'm not saying that to me. I'm saying like to others, you know, um, I've heard that being said. And so it's like, but then there's another person that can say, oh, no, that's not masculine. You know, and so I'm just like, hmm, what is, that's your opinion at this point, honestly. Humans are the ones that gave the definition of masculine infinity. At the end of the day, the fact is humans are human. Then comes opinions. Yep, yep. So, okay, I, 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 because I what you're be. doing, what you're doing, uh, Deshaun, is, and I'm so proud of you for doing this, um, Honestly, how society is, the society that we're born into, you and I, um, there are labels. There just are. You are defining all of 
Like, you are defining all of those. Yeah, I love I, that. I, You're doing amazing. I, I, I think it's really, really wildly important to establish your own codes and your yeah. own definitions for everything in life. You don't need to, and you shouldn't accept everything the society just feeds you, right? Right. You need to come to your own conclusion, reach your own uh, decisions. You need to, you need to embark on, the, on whatever journeys you want. You need to make mistakes. You need to stumble. You need to fall. Yeah. And you have to learn from it. And you have to develop yeah. everything out on your own. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, right, like you said, right, everything is subjective. Everything is on the basis of like your personal experience and your personal perception. Right. Right. And this is why it's so important to like not live in fear. Like tying it all back, not live in fear. You need to just a lot of times uh, take that leap of faith, do something wild, do something extraordinary, because maybe just maybe it'll allow you to, you know, gather new intel, new information that might change your scope and your perception of the world at large. Mm-hmm. Right. Bingo. Bingo. Freaking bingo. And then also, you'll just live a more authentic life. You'll just be more true to yourself. Yes. Also, I do also want to add on to that. Pretty much try your best, folks, to break out of the societal matrix. That is so, it's so limiting for a reason. Yeah, yeah. For a reason. Um, and it's like, mm, who's, who are the ones that are defining that for? I mean, if you really seek to be an individual, if you're cool with being a sheep, then by all means, right? Oh, right. listen, I mean. Right, right, exactly. But if you prioritize, you know, individuality, um, then yeah, study, yeah. And learn, embark on perilous quests, right? There's just, there's yeah. so many opportunities out there, just, just take them. See yes. Where... Yes. Uh, Deshaunt. Josias. Oh my God, I love my new name, man. Deshaunt, you are an all star, and um, I think that th- it's very, very, extremely evident. Um, I remember you weren't able to come on season three, uh, going through stuff, and you know, people, life happens and stuff like that. Um. So, it might not have came when I wanted it to, but it came when it's needed. Exactly. When that, so it's just like. Divine timing. Exactly, because it's just like, if you were on season three, we probably wouldn't be having the same conversation. But now you're on the other side of what you were going through. Mm -hmm. And now look at you enlightened and just different and you're able to bring that um triumph story to us indeed indeed oh. uh it is very much obliged thank you so much Deshant. Oh, very much course. obliged that is my new favorite word by the way folks obliged i feel uh, so professional like i am a, a company and the, yeah. sentiment, the sentiment is like fully reciprocated too by the way the feeling is incredibly yeah. mutual Oh, thank, thank you, you. For, for providing this opportunity. Thank you. It is very much obliged. An outlet for expression. I love it. Yes. Okay. All right, folks. That has been another episode of Vulnerability Time. I am your host and published author, Josias April. I graduate next week, folks, and then um, I'm moving to another state. I'm. I'm not going to speak too much on it right now, but... but you're going to tell me, right? I, I'm not going to it. I'm, I'll tell you. I'll tell you um, when it's official. How about that? Okay, I do. I'm I'm very looking forward to a new journey in my life. I can't wait. New chapter. Glad it for you. Thank you. It is very much obliged. Okay, alrighty, folks. Uh, see you next week for whatever episode that will be on vulnerability time.